Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan and today I'm going to be reviewing freedom. Freedom, the ethereal term meaning independence, meaning individuality, one of the central tenets of my identity as an American, the rallying cry of... Oh, right, right. And today I'm going to be reviewing Freedom, that famous novel by Jonathan Franzen. Disclaimer, I know this is super hard to believe, but this is not the actual cover of Freedom. I don't usually or ever do this, but I actually listened to the audiobook of Freedom, and so I don't own a physical copy. Long story short, I had way too much time this summer where my hands were busy, but my head was not. And therefore, audiobooks. Okay, so Freedom. Today I am going to talk about the book, standalone, nothing but the book, the author, and the reception of the book. Freedom, and I know that I'm not actually holding freedom, but we're going to do an imagination exercise, is the 580-ish page 2010 novel by Jonathan Franzen, an author that the literary world feels pretty strongly about. Strongly. And include me in that. I feel pretty strongly about him, more on that later, and I feel pretty strongly about this book. Okay, so Freedom is a long, realist novel centered on a Midwestern couple, Patty and Walter Berglund as well as their friends, their lovers, and their children. Franzen is supposedly king of writing about families, specifically dysfunctional families, and if this novel is any indication, then that prognosis is exactly correct. This book is also super political at times. Who am I kidding? It's political on every page. The book takes place in modern America, like war in Iraq modern, like directly pre-Obama modern. And I'm actually five years late to the game on this book, like I said, 2010, but it still feels like it could have happened yesterday. Speaking of modern America, I'm not sure I've ever read such an American book, so the title is spot on at the very least. It's got environmentalism coming up against the American machinery of war, it's got basketball, it's got rock and roll, it's got suburbs, subdivisions, America. I mean, this is the writer that Time dubbed the great American novelist, which is, you know, a cool title if you're into that kind of thing. If you want the quick version as to why this book kicks butt, Frankly, stylistically, psychologically, narratively, this thing is flawless, like Beyonce flawless. Every friend that I've talked to says it does the exact same thing. You're sitting there for two hours hating this one character, and all of a sudden Franzen does this really sweet narrative flip, and then that character seems like the only sane one in a room full of straight jacket wearing individuals. The characters are brilliantly managed. To put it way too simply, Every character in this book is utterly hateable and utterly lovable. Okay, so that's the list of things that Freedom has going for it. Are there any problems with it? Personally, there were times where it felt a little bit too political. I mean, there are times when Bird Lover Franzen is holding a megaphone to your ear, screaming that the destruction of bird habitats is bad, which is something I agree with, to be clear. I just didn't necessarily need the novelist screaming it at me on every page. That's a minor thing, obviously, but it's also a semi-common complaint about Franzen. He's on a soapbox. Overall, though, check pluses all around, very few distractions from an excellent and entertaining story. Okay, the author. Now that I have hopefully turned your brains to slush with that fantastic review, I feel it's safe for me to admit something without endangering your opinion of me. As readers, we feel pretty comfortable talking about the standalone text and our individual and communal reactions to it. Obviously, I'm all about having those conversations. That's why I do this whole thing. But the writer in me is also very interested in authorial intent and what Franzen brings to the table in regards to some of the really big questions of fiction. What is an author's responsibility to his or her readers? What is the purpose of fiction, etc.? And it's questions like that that bring me to... I'm not sure I like Jonathan Franzen. In fact, so far, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't. I have a little bit of a backstory there, some personal reasons, but to sum this all up rather quickly, I loved Freedom. I gushed all over this book. Partner that uber positive experience with my predisposition not to like him, a predisposition I am fighting against, to be clear, and I remain pleasantly undecided. So, how am I going to settle this? How am I going to reconcile the artist and the art? Well, the first step is that I have some major friends in catching up to do, which brings us to the reception of the book. In general, the critics say that Freedom lived up to the hype of its predecessor, Franzen's third novel, The Corrections. That's kind of a backhanded compliment, which acknowledges the fact that 
so far, The Corrections is the novel that Franzen will be remembered for. It's billed as like the most important American novel of the 21st century, and I haven't read it. So that is why I am withholding judgment as best I can. Also, I need to read more of his nonfiction. So anyways, the reception of Freedom was overwhelmingly positive, if not quite the level that he received for The Corrections. It won him that time cover that we all can't stop talking about, but The Corrections was generally received better, and that's kind of like dating a cute pediatrician when his very handsome brain surgeon brother is obviously into you. You're enjoying yourself, you're having a good time, but you're also kind of always wondering about that other one. Anywho, we'll see what his next book brings. It's called Purity, and I think it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to be September. Holy crap. I just realized that if this video goes up on Monday, August 31st, Jonathan Franzen's new book, Purity, will be released on Tuesday, September 1st. Anyways, that's all I've got. Uh, to sum up rather quickly, if you want a long book that reads like a short one, buy Freedom. If you want a masterpiece of smooth writing whose characters will tear you up on the insides repeatedly, buy Freedom. Meanwhile, I am going to go hustle through some other books so that I can read The Corrections and maybe even Purity. I'm sure you all will be you know, a part of that experience for me, because I'll probably review them. Thank you for checking out the video. Tune in next Monday for a new one. Just as a reminder, I'm on this new schedule of alternating between book-related videos and more personal videos every other week. I'll see you all next Monday. Best wishes! Hey, beautiful people of the internet, and also hopefully readers of books. My name is Ryan, and this is my review of David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. I have so many thoughts on this book. So many. So, I had the great fortune just a few days ago of finding and then seeing in a theater near me the end of the tour. That's the David Foster Wallace movie, and I am definitely, hopefully, hopefully going to be making a video about it soon. So if you have seen it and you have thoughts on it, which I hope that you do, leave them below in the comments because I want to talk to some people about this. I'm still trying to decide exactly what I thought about it. Anyways, leave comments. I want to talk about this. It seems important. Okay, bye! About 15 minutes ago, I was kind of proud of this. No, not so much.